that's when it's going to be really ugh, scary. Where, like, you start gaming with a person and they're not actually a person. And, like, you've been friends with this person the whole time. They're ugh, not. That's going to be ugh. If you're on top of this, you can make a ton of money. If you aren't learning how to use AI right now, you are falling behind. All right, we're going to check out this video. Uh, generative AI, we aren't ready. So this is, like, the Black Forest thing. This one's by Kyle Hill, who makes really good videos, by the way. You should check out Kyle Hill for sure. In The Three-Body Problem, Chinese sci-fi author Liu Sushin offers a solution to the famous Fermi paradox. Okay. The universe is not empty of life. Rather, the universe, he writes, is a dark forest. So, like, uh, the Fermi paradox is is basically that, like, why are there why are there no aliens contacting us if if there should be based on the amount of uh, like the calculation of like how many planets should have life. They sh we should have been contacted, basically. There is life throughout it, but it's both hidden and hostile. Why? Because any intelligent life foolish enough to broadcast its presence to the cosmos is immediately preyed upon by other more advanced civilizations. And so the Fermi paradox isn't one. Life is out there, but it's intentionally silent. Wait, but haven't we been, we've been doing that though. We've been broadcasting into the skies like forever. So I guess what he's saying is it's, it's coming. As sci-fi as the theory sounds, you're more familiar with the idea than you think. Every day we live more and more of our lives on the internet, in the digital. Mm -hmm. And every day that space is flooding more and more with bots, advertisers, trolls, data scrapers, clickbait, influencers, and mindless social media mobs looking for today's main character. Mm -hmm. The internet feels steadily more lifeless, but that's because, like those alien civilizations, the real human users are hiding in private apps, servers, and RSS feeds, lest they be beset by these digital predators. Ah. This is Yancey Strickler's dark forest theory of the internet, something to explain the declining realness of the web. And I know you feel it. It's hard not to when most photos are shot, influence is bought, engagement is a meaningless number, and every article reads worse than a high schooler's first essay. Unfortunately, with the now uns- I, I mean, at the same time though, like the articles feeling like, uh, the thing is the barrier to the internet has actually like decreased over time. Cause it used to be like pretty nerdy to be on the internet. It's like pretty nerdy. Like you needed like specific setup in order to go on the internet, but now everybody has access to it. Like via phones, you don't even need an internet line really at your, at your home anymore. You can use it on the phone. So because of like all of these technological advancements, like leading into like the internet being a lot more widespread, obviously you're going to have lower quality content because there's going to be more people that have the power to actually put things up right before like having a website wasn't as easy as it was today you know what i mean it's so much easier now like if you wanted like a micro blog right something like twitter you can just sign up for twitter now before you would have to have your own private blog not everybody would be able to see it easily so it's it's uh there have been a lot of technological advances that have caused um a lot of this this uh kind of, I guess, lower quality content because it's a lot easier to see it. Um, in the same way that, I mean, like just using art for an example, if you wanted to see art before, you'd have to go to an anime con to like actually like look at like really good anime or you have to buy an art book. Right nowadays, you can just go on DeviantArt. They just throw all their art up everywhere, everywhere on Twitter. So now you can, it's a lot easier to see more things, especially with like things like, like Don Boru, right? Like a, uh, uh, like image databases and stuff like that. There's a lot, it's a lot easier to see, to see stuff via Boris um, than it was before. Stoppable spread of generative AI. The forest is about to get a lot darker and a lot more dangerous. When you and I last spoke about generative AI or AI that can generate new text, images, videos, sounds from training data, I was merely speculating on how this new technology might change your digital life. But you know it already is, don't you? When's the last time you clicked on anything, believed any headline or any social media post, not wanting to go through the time and effort to check whether or not it's ground truth, whether or not it has the right context, whether or not it's made by an actual person? How could you not feel overwhelmed in an increasingly lifeless and dangerous internet? 
The dark forest internet mm. and generative AI is probably why you've retreated to the places you still get provably human interactions with people you might even know. Private spaces like text messages, emails, discords, and slacks. There have always been advantages to these more curated spaces, of course, but as cultural anthropologist Maggie Appleton points out, generative AI and large language models like ChatGPT are going to force us further into our digital bunkers and impenetrable silos, mm -hmm. echoey though they may be, because the dark forest internet is exponentially expanding. Misinformation expert Nina Schick estimates that the majority of online content. Dude, was that gonna, wouldn't that be crazy if like like you end up you aim you end up gaming with someone that's not real? That's when it's gonna be really fucking scary. Where like you start gaming with a person and they're not actually a person, and like you've been friends with this person the whole time, they're a fucking bot. That's gonna be fucked. Oh my god. Like, like <laughs> Oh, yeah, what if, what if, like, yeah, what if your friends are not, what if I'm not real? I'm just, been, I've just been an AI this entire time, you know? Like, now you can tell, but, like, what if, like, one day, like, you're, you're talking to me, uh, like, on Discord, or, like, we're playing, like, we're playing Helldivers, and, like, the bot is, like, good enough to actually, like, play Helldivers and actually, like, post on Twitter, post in Discord as a real person, but it's not real. And, like, one day, like, I glitch out, and I, I just... I just glitch out in the matrix and you realize it's not real? Dude, it'd be so crazy. Content will be synthetic within the next year. Case in point, ChatGPT and its users are currently generating more text than has ever appeared in every physical book ever written every two weeks. So by now, um, language models have turned uh, into lots of very easy to use products, right? Mm -hmm. You don't really need any technical skills to use them. So these are a bunch of like very popular copywriting apps that are out there in the world. Here's just one of the examples of what's coming from Appleton's talk, The Expanding Dark Forest and Generative AI, the reason I'm making this video. Imagine that some political lobbyists spin up 1,000 decently intelligent AIs that can generate text and video and then they tell each of them to go be influencers. The bots then instantaneously- Do they already do that? They, they, there's already been people doing that, like creating like virtual influencers and they can make them like so perfectly like hot in like the way that like you're just like, it like activates every neuron in your brain, you know? And then they say exactly what, what you want them to say, all of that. That's why like, I don't know, I feel like, I feel like for me at least, for me, the beauty is in flaws. I've always thought that. ...easily make accounts on most social media platforms. They generate their own websites. They publish independent books. With synthesized voices, they make mini documentaries on YouTube. They host each other on podcasts. Individually, they all appear to make a reasonable human amount of content, but taken together, these human lobbyists have created an automated content ring of lifeless engagement at a scope and scale that would take any one human a lifetime to create and curate. This is all possible with the technology that we have right now. And it appeared almost out of nowhere in just a few months. Um, but the point is that this is incredibly easy to do at this point with, with no technical skills. Appleton's example isn't just hypothetical. Companies are doing this right now. In the November of 2023, Elon Musk's mistake user Jake Ward tweeted this. We pulled off an SEO heist that stole 3.6 million total traffic from a competitor. Wait, what? AI allowed Ward to quickly and easily export a competitor's sitemap, turn their list of URLs into article titles, and then, in a matter of just hours, create 1,800 articles from those titles that directed web traffic away from that competitor. Now imagine this kind of strategy for every single corner of the internet. Oh, every man. Every business, every chatbot, every influencer <laughs> pulled off faster and more. The freaking, uh, the freaking corporal warfare is gonna be crazy. More efficiently than any human could even conceptualize. This is what's coming. Thanks for the follow, Chill. Chill thank the you. The dark forest expands. Just over a year ago, we weren't sure any technology or indeed chatbot could pass the famous Turing test. But now, faster than we were ready for and without our consent, humanity is faced with maybe a more interesting question. How will we humans out here in the dark looking for light pass the reverse Turing test? 
Alan Turing's seminal 1950 paper, Computing Machinery and Intelligence, opens with a simple question. Can machines think? Turns out thinking is pretty hard to define. So instead, he proposed a simple test. An imitation game, he called it. Imagine that you're an interrogator of two entities. Your job okay. is to determine, through written text alone, which is the human and which is the computer. If a computer can fool you into thinking it is the human, then that machine will have passed what came to be known as the Turing test. Since Turing, his test was the popularly understood benchmark for thinking machines. And for those of us outside the wired walls of computer science, the Turing test never really seemed passable. It was like the uncanny valley problem for graphics technology. Computers are always getting closer and closer to rendering believable humans, mm -hmm. but you can always tell something is off. Yeah, but I mean, how Turns long? Out primate brains naturally selected over millions of years are pretty good at recognizing faces. How long is it going to be, though? But everything changed with ChatGPT. Suddenly, hundreds of millions of people around the world realized that the Turing test had been passed. The large language model, you can learn exactly how it works in another video, now rates higher than human doctors on bedside manner, scores better than 90% of lawyers on the bar, and 99% uh -oh. of graduate students on the GRE. Yikes. Unsurprisingly, every sector of human endeavor that trades in on human intelligence, which is all of them, is now rushing to incorporate this technology in some way. I've said that because of technology like ChatGPT, everything is about to change. But I don't just mean humans losing their jobs. Yeah, this is like this is like the huge revolution that's coming out. And it's like, you guys should pay attention to this because it's going to be huge. And not only just in terms of like, it's going to make, it's going to change the way that we do things in general. If you're on top of this, you can make a ton of money. If you aren't learning how to use AI right now, you are falling behind, says Chaos. Yes, 100%. Or falling in love with and, and, uh, Sorry, and even then, even if you're like, oh, I don't really want to use AI, you should still learn about it because then you can, you can, you can learn how to counter against any kind of dark AI arts, you know? Chatbots. I mean that Turing's fundamental assumption in his imitation game that a human will have to decide what passes for human is no longer valid in all cases. A reverse Turing test is a modification of the original where the objective of one or more of the roles has been reversed. Mm -hmm. As AI proliferates into every corner of the dark forest internet, other non-human machines will increasingly be tasked with a reverse imitation game where language models and other technologies will try to prove that they're human. CAPTCHA is an example of a reverse Turing test. Mm -hmm. It may soon not be the case, but right now, there are still- God, I fucking hate CAPTCHA. They're so annoying. No system sophisticated enough to reliably read and reproduce distorted images of text. And so the CAPTCHA computer decides that any successful deciphering- Dude, the worst done... one, the worst one is the one on Sony's website. Sony has the worst CAPTCHA I've ever seen. It is, it takes too much time and it's, it's just annoying as hell. By a human. A test like this is important because without it, you can imagine websites being overrun by spam, scams, and bots. But it seems inevitable now that they will be. The specific phrase that LLMs use to identify themselves as an AI language model, has started to show up in Amazon reviews, Yelp reviews, tweets, and LinkedIn posts everywhere, specifically because we don't have the CAPTCHA equivalent protecting those spaces. Mm -hmm. To these systems, the AI may as well be human. The time is coming, and coming very soon, when we will need CAPTCHA-like systems in place, socially, politically, commercially, to determine what is- Dude, can you imagine that, dude? Like, you meet someone in a game, and they're like, hey, what's up? Like, hey, you wanna, you wanna game? Yeah, yeah, you wanna, you wanna play games together? All right, like, here's a CAPTCHA. Like, uh, can you do this for me? <laughs> you send them, like, a fucking CAPTCHA before they can play with you. You're like, you're not a robot, are you, bro? <laughs> like, proof, proof. <laughs> actually human generated content, oh, lest everything you see online just add to the cacophony of a dead internet. 
We every don't part have these like systems yet. Captain. And if and when we do, they are likely to lag dangerously behind what massively incentivized generative AI will be able to do by that point. Do you really think a platform like Twitter will be able to sort? And, and again, guys, like no matter what you think of this, if you hate the AI art, you hate the AI language models, you hate all of that shit, it doesn't fucking matter. Because what you think doesn't matter because it's happening. It's coming. It's, it's a tidal wave that's coming and you could choose to get off the beach if you want. Or you can get fucked. And that's kind of where we're at right now. Sort the synthetic from the simian and make the right moves here when it's basically just shit posting its way through the apocalypse? Sorry, Julio. You're going to have to edit that. <laughs> so, how do you tell other humans and thinking machines that you are in fact human? Well, actually, wait. It's after a minute. It's probably okay. It's probably okay. I said it way later. On a dark forest internet. Maggie Appleton has some practical advice for human signaling online in an age of generative AI. And the first is right here. Show up in meet space, meet other people, go outside and- Ugh. <laughs> Actually touch grass. Something no doubt was lost when our digital lives became more important than our physical ones. So yeah, let's I'm go good. out there and reclaim it. This is not as fun or as accessible as the internet before it went dark, but it's probably the quickest and easiest way to prove that you are a human to other humans. The okay, yeah, but what happens? What happens when they make actual meat mechs? They make like a meat mech for like an AI to go into? Oh, fuck, dude. Institutional verification of your humanness feels the most dystopian idea, but it may be the most unavoidable. It would have to be something that goes beyond a blue check mark that you pay a rich man baby for. Maybe before registering a website, writing an article, or even posting to social media, you have to show up in person somewhere and verify that you are in fact you. Oh my god. Ugh. And not just an image or voice you know how like terrible this would be guys not only not only for me being antisocial, but that would mean they would have so much fucking info on you be easily generated internet culture grew up around hating this idea in principle but it may be impossible to avoid when any bad actor for free can fool millions of people into thinking that the pope has drip or deep fake a president declaring nuclear war the last two tactics Appleton offers takes advantage of the fact that current AI models are indeed machines. Machines trained on certain data sets from certain places and at certain times. Knowing this, we can come together online and triangulate objective reality with each other to prove our humanity. Our brains are constantly producing models of the world I and the space those models accident. against sensory input. Current AI models cannot do this. They don't know any facts, people, or world events that came into being after their most recent round of training. Yeah, well, isn't ChatGPT4 hooked up to the inter internets now? So, like, it actually knows everything now? Isn't, isn't that what happened? And they don't feel the world like you do. They don't belong to communities. I think they're, like, a couple days off, basically. They don't reflect on themselves and their history or enjoy the richness of sensory experience. By communicating with each other online in a way that reflects the aspects of humanity apart from intelligence, we can simultaneously have more grounded interactions and be sure that a human is on the other side of the screen. Finally, we can distinguish ourselves in the dark forest by becoming what Appleton calls algorithmically incoherent. Large language models like ChatGPT only work by sequencing words that are the most statistically likely to go together in response to a prompt based on vast amounts of training data. Mm -hmm. Because of this, these models hedge and generalize. In other words, they basic. 
This gives real humans an opportunity to reclaim one aspect of internet culture that is still the most fun, creating internet-specific culture. No language model will be able to keep up with the pace of weird internet lingo and memes. Apple is that why I don't get all your, your language, guys? Like, when you say, like, what was it? There was, like, some words I got confused with. Is that why? Is it because I'm an AI? <laughs> the return of lead speak. Dude, it's so funny because when people send send me, like, lead speak stuff, like, kind of, like, Pedro Cody stuff, it's just, like, numbers. Like, I can read it. Fulton writes, using jargon euphemistic emoji, unusual phrases, in-group dialects, and memes of the moment will help signal your humanity." End quote. It's possible that human culture could continue to outpace AI culture like teenager culture outpaces their parents. Maybe Riz and Gyat will end up saving something uniquely human online. I wish I was mm -hmm. able to end this warning on a happier note. I really do. And make no mistake, I am 100% certain There's gotta be, like, there's gotta be an existence of some sort of AI meme generator. That's gotta be a thing that exists. Hey, Luna, how's it going? How are you doing? Thank you so much. AI and its proliferation will lead to some amazing outcomes. I think it could provide oh, free no. world-class education to every child in the world. Wait, what time, wait, what time is our, is our fight, Boone? What time are we doing it? the the raid it would just be on their phone i think if anything is going to find a cure for cancer it's going to be one of these large intelligent systems yeah dude but for me uh tonight we're doing um we're doing lucilius actually i should i do that should i stream down on youtube should i stream down on youtube i probably should huh Leo? it is much easier to think of many more much more harmful outcomes phone scammers using your synthesized voice to scam your parents, Thanabot makers who offer to bring back any loved one you wish for the right price. Those are scary, Unify dude. Apps. That's so weird to me. Like the whole bring, like even like thinking about it is depressing. Like I don't even want to think about that. That are already shit. here, by the way, that can make pornography of your 10 year old daughter from a single photo. We are not ready for what's coming. And we need to think about our next steps very carefully, lest we all get lost in the darkness. Wow, that was so artsy. I liked it. This guy's so good at making videos. I love him. They're like, they're like so, they're like just chuny enough. It's got like a little tinge of like nerdy, nerdy chuniness i'm like i can i can sense it in him like i can sniff it out you know as like a fellow chuny myself i could i could smell it it's it's very chuny <laughs> yeah i love Kyle's guys i love them uh let me let me go ahead and link that to you guys i'll if you guys want to check it out 